It's an update on microchip shortages and new car pricing. Microchips, the alleged culprit behind all the new vehicle shortages the car market has experienced. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter here today with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. I say alleged culprit because the truth is nobody really knows for sure the shutdowns in the auto industry have worked all too conveniently well for dealers and their car makers. If you recall back to 2020, rumor has it that automakers cut back on semiconductor orders severely in the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic in early 2020. Apparently, they were fearful of being stuck with excess inventories of cars if demand fell significantly due to the pandemic. If that was an actual mistake, automakers majorly screwed up on that prognostication. No, my goodness. The economy bounced back much quicker than expected after the initial shock from the pandemic. When automakers tried to increase their orders, they had apparently lost their place in line and were put behind other industries such as PCs and smartphones. With so many people home during lockdowns, sales for PCs and other devices had exploded. Computer chips happen to be easier to make. They don't have to be durable against extreme weather like vehicle semiconductor chips do, and they have better profit margins. Yeah. So automakers have been playing catch up and facing chip shortages ever since. The top 10 automotive chip suppliers accounted for 46% of the total market of $69 billion in 2021, according to the World Semiconductor Trade Statistics. Bill Jewell, consultant with Semiconductor Intelligence, said in a blog post last Thursday, shortages of automotive semiconductors will likely remain through at least the year 2023. Although a few automakers indicate they are back at full production, most report continuing shortages. The shortages will prevent automakers from producing enough vehicles to meet demand in the rest of 2022 and 2023, resulting in continued high prices for most vehicles. While some automakers report easing supply issues, chip shortages continue to bedevil others. It will take more time than expected for all the supply issues to be resolved, with recent comments from major automakers revealing very mixed trends in resolving the semiconductor shortages. European traded Infineon Technologies of Germany was the top supplier with 8.3% market share last year. NXP was second with 8% market share, followed by Japanese traded Renaissance Electronics at 6.1% and Texas Instruments at 5.6%. Several semiconductor stocks that are major suppliers to the auto industry are on IBD's tech leaders list. They include Analog Devices, Microchip Technology, On Semiconductor, ST Microelectronics, and Texas Instruments. Capacity at semiconductor fabrication plants such as Robert Bosch plant in Dresden, Germany is expected to increase the supply of microchips, but whether it can do enough to meet demand is still unclear. And right now, shortages are still forcing more car production cuts in 2023. Many industry experts have opined that the microchip shortage is coming to an end, but that's clearly up in the air because several automakers are already beginning to alter production plans for 2023 because of the microchip shortage, and the industry as a whole is bracing for millions more in lost vehicles next year. Stellantis, for example, has begun to taper back planned production of the Jeep Cherokee in 2023 because of the semiconductor shortage. This was reported by Sam Fiorani, Vice President of Global Vehicle Forecasting at Auto Forecast Solutions. A spokesman for Stellantis declined to comment on Sam's future production predictions. <laughs> the automotive industry can expect to lose between 2 million and 3 million units of planned production in 2023, on top of the 10.5 million lost in 2021 and the 3.6 million lost so far this year. Fioriani admits that slowly, more chips are being filtered into the auto industry, but he also added, when we see production of high margin vehicles still being affected, we know that the answers still aren't here and we're still seeing it. Not every automaker agrees that chips are still a factor. BMW and Mercedes-Benz, for example, currently report no significant supply issues related to automotive chips. Volvo says it's already back to full supply, whatever full supply for Volvo might be. <laughs> sure. Nissan sees a recovery in the next few months. Hyundai and Volkswagen say chip shortages are easing, getting slightly better. I guess it depends where they are in line. Right. However, other automakers continue to face chip shortages. Honda Motor says its production outlook is uncertain due to shortages. Ford Motor Company says chip shortages are still an issue. And Toyota Motor sees shortages lasting at least through the third quarter this year, while General Motors expects the shortage impact to last into 2023. Bill Jewell predicts automotive production is likely to remain below pre-pandemic levels through 2024. Phil Amsrud, Senior Principal Analyst for the Automotive Semiconductor Research Area at S&P Global Mobility, 
says chip makers are pouring billions of dollars into new semiconductor production worldwide, but it will take time to come online. In the meantime, lead times for semiconductors remain stubbornly high at about three times more than what was normal in 2019 because of high demand. Amsterd added, it's less about what the absolute number is at this point and more about how the numbers today compare to where they were before we got into this. When lead times get back to more normal levels for a sustained period of time, I'll feel more comfortable saying the situation has resolved itself or is in the process of resolving itself. At the beginning of the year, many in the industry had hoped that the microchip crisis would resolve itself toward the end of this year or into the start of 2023. But that optimism has slowly faded in the months since long semiconductor lead times persist and production cuts continued, Amsrud said. Even three months ago, automaker and supply executives were about evenly split in interviews when the press and the financial disclosures between those who were optimistic of the crisis would ease in 2023 and those who thought it would persist. Today, many more are in the pessimistic camp. What we don't know at this point is, are OEMs trying to lower their expectations to the market or do they genuinely see that they still have issues? I'm not sure what the answer is, but I do see nothing to indicate that clouds are going to part in January 2023. <laughs> oh. Dan Hirsch, Managing Director at Alex Partners says, capacity at semiconductor fabrication plants that make chips favored by the auto industry is expected to rise about 20% next year. However, since automakers will look to meet pent-up demand from the last two years, and because the number of microchips per vehicle is rising, that doesn't mean the industry will be flush with chips and be able to make all the vehicles they want, all. Constraints are still expected next year on automakers being able to make all of the systems and accessories and heated seats and everything else that are increasing yeah. the number of devices that go into the car. That always makes me laugh that somebody wants their butt cheeks warm in the car. <laughs> Yikes. The microchip outlook could change in part because of the dark shadows of recession in 2023. <laughs> Automakers have generally allocated more semiconductors to higher margin and more expensive vehicles at the expense of the lower cost models, yeah, sending the average transaction price of new vehicles soaring over the last two years. As the economy worsens, automakers might have to rethink that strategy. The industry's current approach is certainly taking a bunch of buyers out of the loop. Yeah. Having a good selection of vehicles under 30,000 would make them much more affordable and bring a lot of buyers back in and potentially stir the industry and the economy. Manufacturers have quite clearly priced many people right out of the car market. And I'm very sure that's not an accident. I mean, look at used car prices. Right, which means Many people are keeping their older vehicles for longer and are the likely owners of vehicles that are perfect candidates for the X caps. We've shared this information before, but the reason X caps work to boost fuel economy so effectively is that they blow away carbon deposits and create the perfect environment for combustion in the vehicle. Since a brand new vehicle already has an optimized combustion chamber, it's brand new, there typically isn't a MPG improvement in brand new cars. But if you've had your vehicle for a while and put a few miles on it, that's just about everyone. Your yeah. vehicle is a perfect candidate for X caps. We sent out a sample to Franklin Santana and he emailed us to say, first and foremost, thank you for the demo MPG Extreme capsules. My 2003 GMC Envoy 4.2 liter engine was getting 15 miles per gallon. And after two weeks using the caps, now I'm getting 17.5 miles per gallon. It is awesome. Keep up the good work. Sincerely, Franklin Santana. Hashtag you guys rock. Thanks for that, Franklin. If you'd like to have your own success story like Franklin has, it's easy to become a preferred customer. Option one, 10 X caps for $29.95 plus shipping, or option two, 30 X caps for $59.95 plus shipping. And if you're choosing to be just a customer for now, you should do this second pack, 30 for $59.99, in case your vehicle needs more time for the ECM to adjust to the oxygen fuel mixture. Your satisfaction is 100% guaranteed. For you home-based business opportunists, there are now three options for ISRs. First is a silver pack, which is 100 X caps for $199.95 plus shipping. And there is also a gold package available now, which is 75 X caps and a box of trucker's crumbs for $299.95 plus shipping. And finally, a trucker's package, which is three boxes of trucker's crumbs for $339.95. Nice. One box of trucker's crumbs will treat 1,200 gallons of fuel. And it looks just like this. Comes with a whole bunch of vials inside of it. Each vial treats 120 gallons of fuel, and there's 10 of them in the box. Yep. And if things couldn't be bad enough in the world of fuel, well, everyone should know there's a fuel crisis coming 
with a projected shortage of diesel. If you're burning diesel right now, you're going to need every advantage you can get. And a big storage tank. <laughs> yes. If you have questions about the X-CAP and how it can boost the fuel economy in your vehicle or fleet of vehicles, email us at kevinthehomeworkguy at gmail.com or call text to 701-441-3399. We have a big customer database, so we know how to produce the best results, and we promise you a straight-up honest answer. Remember, there's no risk involved. Ironclad, 100% customer satisfaction guaranteed. And yes, Kevin often does answer phone calls when he calls people back who try to reach us on our MPG phone line. At a minimum, you'll get a text response from us. That's right. And as an added bonus for those of you who sign up as an ISR with the gold package or the trucker's crumbs from MPG Extreme, I will personally contact you directly and share my cell number with you and you'll have unlimited access and help and advice directly from me and Liz on all your future car deals. How'd you like to have us on speed dial when you set foot in a dealership? <laughs> that alone is worth its weight in gold. And I look forward to it. Yeah. All right. If you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. We welcome you to our family. And of course, please share our videos on social media. Thanks everyone for coming back and to all of our faithful followers and to our team of ISRs out there. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, signing off with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.